Secretary Dole and the Conrail team. Mr. President. We have something for you. I want to make this presentation on the behalf of all the men and women in Congress. It represents the first down payment on your proposition program in the United States, and I congratulate you, sir, for helping us. $200 million, and this is negotiable. This is oh, yes. Yeah. This is, this is, this is it. No, no, this no. is it. <laughs> the Federal Reserve is prepared to clear it. No. I understand we'll operate the government for 1.6 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that's the down payment. Let me is an unusual case. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed, sir. Jim Burley is my deputy, Mr. President. John Riley is the head of the Federal Railroad Administration. Wayne Vance is the chief of staff at the And this is Rich, Richard Fink. Richard is a key member in the Coalition, coalition for Privatization, as well as Dirk Van Dongen. And Wayne Ballas, who's another of our leaders in the Coalition for Privatization. Now we're going to have everybody line up for a group photo. Okay, fine. Squeeze in here. How do you want to do this? Where, where do you want? Where do you want? Yes, Why don't you do short guys? Speaking of this, squeeze in there. I think okay. just type on You're right. If we could get everybody looking at the camera for one second. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is the largest and the shortest personal stock in the United States. And they're ready to go. Thank you. Okay. With Conrail. That's great. So we're all very pleased. I hate to live up with that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. One other thing I'd like to present you, Mr. President. This is your very own Conrail tie. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. And we hope you will enjoy wearing it. You wear that. <laughs> See, Mr. Crane has his on. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you know I am no train. I don't. Oh, in fact, matter of fact, after flying a desk for the Air Force in World War II, I grounded myself for about 15 years and just decided that I'd be the, uh, or I'd get in the wrong airplane. <laughs> so, and it was wonderful. It had more benefits at the time to do what I did because then I went eight years at the General Electric Theater and every year they'd have me out on the road and so forth. But I found out from my other friends in television that there was a common thing then about every other week their sponsor would call them up and say, you know, some group would ask him and say, yes, well, yes, he, oh, sure, he'll be glad to come. Off he'd go to New York or someplace else. <laughs> well, when I had to get on a train for a couple of days, General Electric never did that. <laughs> but, uh, but I used to love it. I knew that someday I'd have to fly again. And, and the day came. <laughs> Mr. President, Stanley Crane is the best in the business. He's done a You're tremendous job turning around Conrail and putting it on the well, right track. Well, asset that you can sell and start your privatization effort. That's what we're all working on. Uh, uh, Tell me was before Elizabeth, uh, who mobilized 500 groups from all around. We would have never got it through. She's really the queen of privatization. She is. <laughs> very that's, that's right. Well, now let me speak to these three here because they're the three who put together. They worked with me to set up the coalition for privatization, coalition of Americans for privatization, and uh, what they intend to do now is use that coalition for other privatization right. initiatives. We've referred to this as the flagship of privatization. This one goes now. All of these others will follow in its wake. Whereas if we hadn't moved on this one, we would have really slowed the momentum considerably. So they're ready to use this vast coalition now for a lot of other initiatives. Like TVA and... Uh, <laughs> you may be ready to go. You may be ready to go. Right. Get the list together. <laughs> 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 Wayne and Dirk and Rich are the ones who really put that together. So we're just delighted to share this day with you. <laughs> we're all very does excited. Care of getting, uh, when the Secretary of Bill calls us, uh, we always respond to that call because she's always leaving a good cause on your yeah. And we've appreciated being part of what I hope is the start of something very historic. Well, when I mention TVA, it's kind of close to my heart. I have a story involving them that I delight in telling young people, like in school, question and answer session and so forth. You know, all of us when we were really young kind of had looked askance at big business and thought, well, you know, nothing could be good up there. Well, I was doing that theater for eight years and 
And they had made me, first of all, Rev. Gordner, now deceased, was the president. And they had me on the road about 12 weeks, broken up into a couple of weeks sections during the year, visiting the GE plants. I visited 139 plants in 38 states, met 250,000 employees individually. And uh, then they would make me available wherever I was for Chamber of Commerce, Banquets, or United Fund, or whatever. And I kept waiting with a chip on my shoulder for him to tell me what I was going to say. And they never did. And I, you know, in Hollywood, if you don't sing or dance, you become an actor. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always used to doing my own speeches. And eight years, and they never said anything. But this time, going out on the road for another trip, the fellow that went with me called from New York, said there was a lot of trouble at headquarters. And I said, what? TVA at Bell Gordon told him to fire me or they would take $50 million a year in business away from, uh, from the uh, company. And uh, I, I had referred, I was speaking at the time uh, against government domination of business and so forth, and I'd used an example of something having to do with TVA. And I said, George, uh, well, what is Ralph Gordon say? He said, no one's heard from him. So the next day I called and I said, George, we're going out on the road in a couple of days. What, Ralph? He said, no one's heard from him. And it finally dawned on me, probably no one was going to hear from him. Well, I called Ralph Gordner, and that isn't as easy as it would sound now. But he came on the phone, and I told him that I'd learned of this. And he said, I'm sorry you heard about that. He said, it's my problem. I've taken it on. And uh, I said, well, I would. Oh, he said, uh, he added on there, he said, I've taken it on and I've told them that uh, General Electric has never told an employee what he can or can't say and we're not going to start. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I won't take up your time, Mr. Gordner, telling you how, what, how much that means to me here to say that, but I'd hate to think that because of something I said, some of those people I've met up there on the assembly line, Schenectady at the turbine factory, might be, have to be laid off when he said, this is a matter of principle. So I said, Mr. Cordner, what would you say if I told you that I can make that same speech this next week and I don't have to use TBA as an example? I've got a lot of examples. <laughs> and there was a pause and then a very warm human voice said, well, would make my job easier. <laughs> That's right. But you'd be surprised when kids hear this, some of these young people here, they get a kind of a different slant. Big business. Yes, <laughs> well, well, we appreciate this. I understand we're dinner partners tonight, so I look forward to seeing you in a few well, hours. <laughs> all right. We have the, in fact, I hope my husband has won re election today. Has anybody heard? <laughs> I don't think he was opposed for a for Republican leader, but we'll be uh, looking well, forward to seeing you. I'm going to get out early because I'm planning on a vacation in Iran. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, Mr. President, to say John Riley, the Federal Railroad Administrator, and Jim Burnley, my deputy, these two have spent the last three years of their lives on this issue, <laughs> and they have done yeoman's work. So I'm just so grateful to everybody here for all you've done. Did right, we're on our it. way. It was worth it. Right. We look forward to working with you on a lot of other privatization initiatives right. now. This is a privatization team shot. <laughs> That's right. We'll see thank you. you. Wonderful. Thank you for my time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. Surgery. I kicked John. I was going to say, how, how is John? He's better. It didn't hurt him as much as it looks. Say hello, Mr. President, to B. Pickens, and you know Boone Pickens as well. And B would like to introduce you to the people from the Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Yes, Mr. President, this is Mr. and Mrs. McMillan. Sayarino, come over. And our artist, Mr. and Mrs. Bates, and his wife. Hello there. Mr. President. And Mr. and Mrs. Lewin. Hello there. Nice to see you. Mr. President. I think we should all gather for a pretty picture. Mr. President, before I was going to see if maybe Tom, who's the foundation, they made a personal print for you before they get the. Oh, this is a photograph, but it's the first print, Mr. President. It's for you. Oh, yeah. uh, 
we'll make sure that the original first print comes in here too. So we'll have it. Thank you very much. Much appreciated of that. I think the original shows it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, artist, the artist might want to tell you a little something about it. Yeah. Why that it's it's okay. yeah, you yeah. Well, I did this. Uh, and it's a, it's a proud <laughs> goose in the autumn, and the, the mate has just swum by, as you know, they mate for life, so you can see the trace of the mate just having swum by there, and some of the plants that you might find around here in autumn. So. I hope it does the job. That's the good point. Now, why don't we have everybody join in? We'll do a group photo around the painting. Thank you. Uh, I guess you better get I can stand behind you. Yeah, you can see me. That's great. It's right there. I should. Hey, discovered they married for life. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bateman did the first Canada Habitat print, which sold over 50,000. If we have some modest success with this print, it'll all go straight to wildlife. He's donated all of his proceeds. <clears throat> That's great. And, and this year, along with it, or to date, three million dollars raised by three different programs. Programs. This year. To which from his donations. His paintings. All donated by Bob for the World Wildlife Fund, for the uh, Canadian Wildlife, Canadian Wildlife Fund, Fund, Habitat Canada, and the Wildfire Trust in England. Three million dollars. Three million dollars. Now the USA. Now the USA will follow suit, I hope. All right. <laughs> That's a lot of money, but it's not as much as Conrail just came in. Here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We had. We do have time to get money. Yeah, you do. Yeah. We that was just a phone. Real check or something. No, that's the actual check. Really? That's the one that's got yeah, to be. They have to take it. It really upsets the bank when that happens too, because I had one given to me, not near that size, yeah. but a large one, and, and uh, they said just send it through. And the bank called me and they said, "Don't do this again." <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They now 
John's advice is stay cool and the world doesn't play by the Queen's very rules. Mr. President, Field Marshal, Field Marshal Gonzalo, Deputy Prime Minister of Egypt. Good to see you, sir. It's good to see you. Thank you, sir. Field Marshal, one of our greatest friends. We're very honored to be the head of here. Delighted you had the time. Thank you. And will you it's an honor for me to, to see you, sir, and I, I hope you uh, you are feeling well and everything is fine. Feeling just fine. Steve, yes. best ambassador from Egypt. asking me to tell you that he wishes you all the best and he is uh, with you. Well, please give him my warmest regards. We value very highly. Mr. President, we had this event with the field marshal for about an hour, and one of the things we talked about was Iran. And I think uh, President Mubarak uh, and the field marshal have a good understanding of, good. of uh, what our objectives were there. They're consistent with Egyptian objectives. This has been a, a terrible time with the way the press is running with this, and they're facing everything they write and put on the TV screen and everything. But Mr. President, I think that you won yesterday. I was on your side <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a member of the family here because I spent four years here. <laughs> yes, yes. Defense Attaché, a very distinguished member of the, uh, of the Egyptian uh, like, uh, the embassy here for a long time. He's a great friend of America. I've been, I've been telling visitors to the office of day that I'm planning on a vacation. <laughs> we, uh, we expected to see a picture of that. Uh, the, Mr. Cathy said the program is running 85% paper. Yes. And that's very good. That's why I can't get the paper polls into them, what they say. The, uh, the, uh, not only the telegrams, but the more than 2,000 phone calls that yeah. followed. 84% were paper polls. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't disturb you with mine last night, but I just want to let you know that at all. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right. Well, but particularly helpful on the ships going through the, uh, the Suez Canal, our, our naval ships. The field marshals had a difficult time with that, but he's helped enormously, and uh, we are most grateful for it in every way. Mr. Fred, they have an FMS debt problem, which we're working on. Yeah, I know. We will be to you shortly with a decision on that issue. I was asking. Uh, I, I may go back with a message from, uh, from you, Mr. President, to President Mubarak. Well, I hope we can Well, this is a great pleasure to have you here. I was so delighted to have the Parliament's vote with regard to the occupation of Afghanistan. Oh, yes, surely it's a uh, protest against it. Uh, we're already grateful for your visit of last year. You had a, well, Mr. President, you had a very big success. Well, and many, many people are speaking about uh, success. Uh, and often I uh, hear questions uh, what I think was a visit of the United States. Great success. Well, yes, yes. well I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Mm -hmm. It's a great pleasure for me. Yeah. We landed there. It was an honor for our assembly. Now we are more than lost because we have Spain and Portugal that joined yes, us. Right. Yes. Last year we had not Spain. No, no, we have uh, 84 more members, 60 in Spain, 24 Portuguese. Yeah. So 518. I'm sure the Soviets didn't fool you with their pretended withdrawal from Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was like an actor on stage going off one side, coming around and on the stage the other. <laughs> C'est la faute sortie de l'acteur, je me souviens. Oui, 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 oui. Je comprends bien, ça. Et tous les jeunes. Quand je pense à ça, 
recently in Reykjavik. I'm not a linguist, mm -hmm. but uh, I did speak a little Russian to mm -hmm. the secretary, the general secretary. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and it was an old Russian proverb. Dobrya no problya. It means trust, but verify. <laughs> no, it's, it's he like, smiled. <laughs> you can smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's not enough. No, that's not enough. <laughs> President Plimley has been a very good friend of the United States. Uh, he's helped the Parliament. Oh. So have so many, many communists in the Parliament. So he's uh, helped us. I am an old man, so I remember what happened. I remember war. The British were I remember the Marshall Plan. Mm -hmm. I was members of the French government. Immediately after the war, mm -hmm. President Frank was very poor, yes, and uh, uh, at that time the aid of America was very important for the reconstruction of the economy. Of course, younger people don't know it. Remember, they have often opportunities. They must never forget the Americans have done for us, not only the war, after war. I'm old enough to have those memories too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's, uh, I enjoy reminding some people every once in a while about the Great Depression. You have no difficulties, but I must say, you are well confident in you. Well, thank you, you very much. Your yes. I think our best uh, for us. Say this. Well, I think our president told me. First day when they came at me, and I knew it about this magazine in Beirut, mm -hmm. and I told them, I said, please don't ask the questions, and please don't speculate, or you're going to cause, you could cause the death of a number of people both there who even did the business. Who's the wrong son? I've met the rule with signs of responsibility. And uh, we are able to also to resist the protections. I know it's very difficult for you. Uh, I know there's problems between uh, the European community, the United States, and the world's government, so I don't want to have to discuss the culture of the world. I am interested by the culture of the president because I have for three years been French in the Soviet culture. So I understand the problems of our problems and of your problems. Well, both. Yes. yes. And I hope you will really succeed to harmonize. I find it's also okay. Okay. It's better to have cooperation as war. Yes. Yes. I believe we only have troubles when we talk about each other, not when we talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, child. Yeah. Good to see you. you. Can I speak no, no. two minutes more? Please. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, not well enough. I had some, it was in high school, it was taught some French. No, he went to More of the students, yeah, same French.
As you recall, there had been previously quite a controversy in the world before this missile had been yes. yeah. Now that the Arctic border is great concern yeah. that it would be withdrawn since we consider these intermediate French missiles to be a guarantor of our security. Yeah. So yeah. I'm great concern that there's talk about withdrawing. Well, as I was able to say to her, this, they would be withdrawn only when the what it was when the SS-20s, the Russian missiles, were withdrawn too. Withdrawn or destroyed? Withdrawn or destroyed? Well, destroyed. Yes. Oh yes, Taylor, yes, destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then we would not abandon the ship at that point. Then we realized that without the missiles as a deterrent, they have a tremendous conventional superiority. And then we would have to, at that same time, enter into negotiations to make sure that neither side was left with a tremendous advantage that we would have to conduct. My best wishes for this side. I have to tell you what the radio is up this week. I appreciate Well, thank you very much. I just want to tell you one thing about your language. I studied it in school when I was a schoolboy for a couple of years. It was required. And then in 1949, for the first time, I found myself in France. I met a motion picture in England. And a couple over there and myself, we crossed the channel. And I found out that this English couple had never crossed the channel, did not know one word of French. <laughs> Am I going to be the one that has to think of the language? But we were coming, we were driving in his car, and we were coming to work in town where we were going to have lunch. The question is, how do you find the restaurant? Mm -hmm. So as I began to think back mm -hmm. to my schoolboy lessons and could remember a few more words, I kind of built up my part a little bit. We drove into the town with the gendarme standing there. I was ready for him. I told my friend to stop and roll down the window, and I said, pardon me, J. Grandfait, who am I my uh, cafe? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And he told me, so then my friend that was driving, he said, what did he say? And they said, I have the slightest idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.